welcome to the fourth episode. Fourth episode. Fourth episode of the Tom and Jerry Show. Hey, I was cracked there. What's going on? I'm Tom. And I'm Jerry. I, I, I might sound a little bit different now because I'm fucking dosed. Yeah, he's been smoking drugs all week. As a, what, was, what did you say it was? It was uh, just, just for research, was just, it? Just for try out. Yeah, just get it. it all done. Scratch an itch. I knew when I saw you with those long Rizzlers last week, it was just going to be something. Did you? That's the thing. I was only thinking, do they still still sell the long Rizzlers? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, they sell. I never knew what the, was the difference between never having smoked. Now, what was the difference between green Rizzlers and blue Rizzlers? And oh yeah, the, Rizzlers di- the difference with those is the texture. In it'd be like different grades of sandpaper. All right. It, yeah, they would, I, know, they, I love the way you kind of put it to me in a way. I don't yeah, I do, yeah, I knew you'd have. <laughs> what it was is there was the blue ones are really soft. It was almost like old baking paper. Right. Those are for people deft of hand. Yes. Then there was the orange ones, which didn't have the corners cut off. What was all that about? Some fellas wanted the corners cut off on their ones. On the kind of what? Oof, easy rolling. The corners apparently did make a difference. I personally, I smoked the rollies back when I smoked. Didn't make a blind bit of difference. Any of them. Uh, the green ones had the corners cut off, but the one ones like were the long ones that were twice the length. I've never seen anybody smoking a roly twice as long. The only people that are buying roly papers extra long, yeah, are smoking drugs. I tell you, you, I, you can say what you want about Rizla, but they're really fucking cornering the market. Oh, they know. They, they know their audience. Yeah, but well, I, I often wonder, like, would you not? If I was a cop and it was a slow day, I'd just hang around in the back of a spar and see who went out with the long Rizlas. Because he's not, uh, he's not just making. Uh, no, he like he's not making extra he's, long cigarettes. He's, he's not lining a tiny little bacon tin with them. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing, you'd see the lads who are definitely going to smoke a joint. They'll buy a packet of cigarettes and then uh, a packet of cigarette papers. Well, what's that for? Well, I, I don't believe it's that he he doesn't believe in the structural integrity no, of the cigarette double, paper that's on it. Yeah, double insulate. But that's <laughs> it. Then nobody ever follows them, lads. Tom. So I suppose we plow on straight with the yeah, show. We'll yeah, get into it here. Uh, yeah. So this is it. First part of the show, as always. This is uh, our one we like to call uh, giving out yards. Giving out yards. And I suppose I, as, as like yourself, I'll feel this one. What this, are we giving out yards about this, this one? This week, it's a it's a simplistic enough one. Probably a lot of people don't really cop it because you'll see it and there's the oohs and ahs and comments and stuff and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and stuff. But it's the it's the it's the innate, like absolute selfishness of these people that decide, or I suppose blokes that decide to propose during ticketed events. Ticketed events, such ticketed as concerts or concerts, sporting events. Sporting events, these absolute bollocks. I was only watching one the other day, and it was it was I can't remember what concert it was. I think it could have been Bruce Springsteen, but it was like, you know, uh, like he's there and he's like, oh, I, I'm just gonna stop, you know, just after singing, you know, Born in the USA, and he's just oh, uh, is there a is there a you know an Amy Joukowsky in the audience? And you know the audience it cut straight. So this wasn't in Tolman Park. No, this wasn't in Tolman Park. <laughs> uh, she was one of the Ryan Joukowskys. Uh, <laughs> But it just cuts to this oh gowl of a woman. She's like, oh my <laughs> Jesus, oh my Jesus. And you know, like your man's been at the bathroom or something like, you know, and it's all teed up and the whole concert is stopped. Like, I could only, I, and then all of a sudden he brings her up on stage. She's like, oh, I think there's a, your, your husband is here. Uh, I, 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 somebody called Glenn, is Glenn here? And all of a sudden this, this guy comes out, drops on one knee oh, man. and everybody's going, oh, now, I know Bruce is known for doing a longer set, but say I go to see Neil Diamond. Neil isn't getting a late bus home line. No, He never. is shutting the door at half eleven. Yeah. And this you're, is you're eating, eating in into his to ten... This could be in the middle of fucking Sweet fucking Caroline or Love on the Rocks or whatever. Or the Rhinestone Cowboy, my per- personal favourite. In order to see this shit going on, you might miss Cracklin' Rosie. They, they, now you're talking! You'd have to cut it short. <laughs> Cracklin' fucking Rosie. There would be no encore, because... Fuckhead here had to get up and what propose an to me. It's 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 it's. it's have you witnessed much of this now? I mean, you do. You have to. You know, for you, you would have a good insight of what goes on in the internet and all the rest of it. I would, but I would a, keep an eye on the internet, and I, I, I would see a lot of this kind of. Um, Flash mobs were big for a while, and that, I'm fine with that if they don't get in my way. Well, I'm right. you know, and but I hate shopping malls anyway. But it, so you rarely find me. In I one. wouldn't. I wouldn't stop to look at a flash mob. No, that's what they want. That's I exactly walk, what you want. Oh my God, the whole of Edinburgh Festival last year, it was glee flash mobs. It was all these middle class kids. Hatefully, most of the blokes' names were called Tom. <laughs> but they were all like these 17 and 18 year old scrawny young fellas. Like, Tom, 
Fiddlesworth you know all these right, they've all yeah, these yeah. totally you know they definitely have a thousand acres at home like Warner, these yeah. fellas don't have to be you know horse and logs during the summer to pay for college yeah. like they don't these lads are definitely but they seem to be all flash mobs if I seen a flash mob take place in say the Blanchard's Tent Centre for example mm-hmm. I'd join that fucking thing would you? hells yeah and I'd just do whatever the hell I wanted. Oh, just to fuck up their whole affair. I'd, I'd be, I'd be doing, uh, I'd be doing end of a wedding night uh, skids on the ground on your knees, on my knees, yeah, tie wrapped around my head, and just acting the bollocks and kicking people out of the way. And, uh, and if anybody, <laughs> anybody pulled me on, I'd be like, I'm part of the fucking later half of the flash. Come on, stay in character. Oh yeah, like you, yeah, you, you tried to, you tried to train with the rest of them, but because you're simple, Jerry. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, come on, fucking back me up. Flash mob is one thing. Okay, they they're just kind of they spring up out of your day, and I personally have never seen them. I'd, I'd say Grafton Street would be the place to see it. It would. It'd be a, a lot of wankers. Set up, but like you know, yeah, imagine it that definitely would be a wanky kind of place to do it. All right. But this thing of uh, proposing to the to the missus. How insecure do you have to be to 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 say, look, I really love you. I really, love, I'm going to do it in front of ten thousand paying people. Well, the classic one over here was the Rosa Tralee one, wasn't it? Oh, that was some dire dose. Jesus Christ of a mic. That was, eat, curl your toenails, eat your fingers. It was desperate. And you know, the killing thing, the killing thing was, like, she got one shot at being a Rosa Tralee. And this motherfucker. Out, and he just fucking bounces up out of nowhere. And you could see on her face. She, oh, she knew it. He for, fucked it on her. Yeah. Absolutely her ruined it. The thing was just like, I'm being a Rosa Tralee. Oh, oh my God. Can you fuck off for two minutes? Oh, yeah, I might. Well, he just kind of put it in his head that this is the place to do it. You know what I see over in America a lot now? We, we see a lot of this uh, videos of this coming over. The kiss cam at games. Yeah, 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 where yeah. you focus on a couple in the thing and, you know, you give them a little peck. And I reckon it's only a matter of time before we see that in Croke Park at the All-Ireland Final. The kiss Imagine cam. that. Dubs up in the Hill 16, the kiss cam. Mm, Jesus That's Christ. not one you're going to turn your head to. No, definitely not. Some right, guy yeah. with no shirt on and, like, the, you know, the Dubs tattoo on his... Yeah. Large breast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spinning around to herself. Full of caroling. Turns yeah. around. <laughs> gives, gives. Who wants to see that? Why is that a thing? I don't know, but it's it's Americans. But he, that's the thing. Like, who who came up with that first day? Like, who was on that? Like, I, I can't... Who Like, who didn't pull... Whatever about the kiss cam, that's all marketing and all the rest of it. But if you turned around to me prior to your missus and you said, listen to how I'm thinking. Take an ask on the missus. Good job, Jerry. Yeah. What, what, what were you thinking of doing? Taking her up to the mountain, you know, her favourite restaurant. What, what were you thinking of doing? No. I'm going to pull up in the middle of a game. Uh, I'm going to get the, the guy to... Shamrock Rovers. Yeah, Shamrock Rovers uh, out <laughs> in Tella. I'm going to get the, the guy with that's on the neon board. Yeah. To to... Yeah. There, I would nail your foot to the ground. It would just not yeah. happen. It just wouldn't happen. You see, I can see it happening in, in America, in American football and such like, because it's nothing but fucking breaks and they have to fill time somewhere. I suppose, yeah. They, yeah, there's like 16 breaks in the middle of a game. Yeah, well, right What are you in a game of GAA? you got like a 10 minute break in the Buys middle of it. Buys eight and oranges. Yeah. Sweating yeah. their bollocks off. You have about a little, enough time to go for a slash. Yeah. And get a packet of crisps. And a pint. And a pint. I'll be back. Like, you know, you don't have time. And I don't see how you do it because isn't it half time in Co Park? Isn't that when they send out like the mini sevens? That's it, Jack. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the little young fellas all run around after one ball, actually. Yeah, yeah. that would be. That would, but, you know, like. So you want to be some here to go out and go, right, listen, kids, why don't you all just fuck off for two seconds? Here's a tenner. Well, I hold fuck off and get a, a pink snack. Yeah. While, uh, while, this, while you still can. How romantic would this be to say that 90% of the people that witnessed you getting down on one knee and asking her? Don't fucking know you. Kind of hate you because they're going, listen, I left the missus at home so I didn't have to deal with romantic kind of shit. Yeah, and now you're slapping this in my face. But the thing is, they, the people that are actually witness you are coming back with, like you said, a fucking ham sandwich under their arm, a packet of crisps and a fucking pint. They're half cut and all they're doing is going, what the fuck is going on? There's a time and a place for all this. Uh, that's, that's the exact thing. There's a time and a fucking place. Or like I've said... Like, I mean, I, I, I get a little bit uncomfortable when I see people holding hands in Ikea, right? Yeah, like she's going to get away from you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, you know, oh, but that's okay. You could, you could, you could say, you're not going out that long. Yeah. And it's nice. Or you're, if you're given yeah, okay, a yeah, yeah. kiss on the train, like you've fucking never seen each other before. Yeah? <laughs> you're off to war. That's, that's, that's just, you know, okay, we, we give you... You know, we'll give you an inch with that one here now. But okay. don't make us all fucking witness the monkey. Don't be at this crack here of hauling ourselves out. Uh, 
declarations of love or anything like this. I mean, I can't deal with it, man. I really can't. It's it's but it, it's 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 the level of insecurity. It's like really, really, is this gonna pressure or rent it because you're such a bollocks anyway? Like, I, I think I think it's a sign that the whole relationship is on shaky ground that he feels he needs to do something yeah. like this. All right, because like before anyone listens at home, he starts talking about oh, but I think it's romantic. Hey Tom, hey Jerry, maybe your girlfriends or wives, maybe they'd like, uh, maybe they'd like it. If I turn around to my wife in the middle of uh, uh, a concert, <laughs> I said, "Just come with me for one second. I've got something really." She, I would draw back a stump. She would. Oh, break, you know she it. Would you would my be fucking arm before she. One ear would at least be twice the size of the other fucking ear. She would kick the shit out of me. There yeah. is absolutely no physical. There way is no fucking way. I know it. Like I know it. If I I pro- propose to Natasha to fucking thing like that. Forget about. it. No, forget it would it. just be a I'd, I'd wake up. I'd wake up with maybe one tooth missing. Yeah. She's standing over me going, man. Yeah, this is it. Get man. your shit and leave. Get your shit and leave, you absolute you know, gobshite. Like, it's, not, it's, not like me, it's not like me and the missus go to that many things. I'm thinking about live events that we've been to in the past couple of years. We were comedy, isn't, comedy events definitely aren't where you want to do definitely it. Definitely like, no. That's actually, that's my Hell biggest no. fear is that some motherfucker, I'm rocking a club some night and some motherfucker just drunkenly stands up and proposes to his missus like because I'm, I'm, I'm it, it has happened has it? yeah it has happened fuck that uh, there was um, a night in the sugar club right there's priors there was a night in the sugar club and it was like a comedy okay. sort of a general comedy slash whatever mixed variety night mixed right. martial arts yeah 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 and a guy got up and proposed to his girlfriend smack bang in the middle of it I watched a video of it online Fucking bollocks. Wow, well, look, it's not what I'd do myself. Alright? It's not what I'd do myself. But obviously he just felt that this was the time and the place. Like, is that the thing? Like, did the sugar club mean that much to you? Did the sugar club... The did, sticky carpets of the sugar club. comedy night in the sugar club mean that much to you? Yeah. Were you That's having that good a night? Fucking hell. You know, you know and, 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 and like, maybe we're just... No, we're not broken, bitter people no, here. No, no, no. I don't. I like. I'm not. I wouldn't say I was the world's most romantic, but I know that that shit is not fucking romantic. That I don't know much about fucking romance. It's the opposite like, of romance. It pretty much is. Like, I mean, uh, like today, I was dropping the gearbox down out of the, out of a jeep. I would sooner that be a time where I lean on it out from under it and go, "Here, uh, I found this down here." Yeah, come here. How'd you like a day out? Yeah, how'd you like a day out? <laughs> Tell your mother to buy a hat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <like. laughs> Oh man, so that is giving out yards about that. Yeah, all right, we'll take a glass of water. Good God. Holy crap. All right, ploughing on, on, Jerry, because I know every, the bit that everybody waits to hear. About. This is the one. This is the horror stories. Everybody just kind of leans in a little bit closer to hear. This is the one. This is the one, me and Tom, as you might know, we say it every week. We're mm. both stand up comedians. Mm. Uh, and every now and then, it just doesn't go according to plan. No, it does it not. Time. No, it does not. So like anything in life, Jerry, things can come off the rails. Comedy yeah. is one where it's a god. Four, where it should have five wheels, it's got four rattly wheels. Yeah, it is very rarely on any form of stable rail. Yeah. Whatsoever. Uh-huh. And henceforth, this section is called Worst Gig Ever. Holy shit, so I'll feel this one. Mm-hmm. My worst gig ever this week is a time, Tom, right? I went to do this stand up comedy gig. And I went out and I told some jokes. And people didn't think they were that funny. And they didn't laugh. And then I went home. No, that's not good enough. Not good enough, not no, good because enough, you know Jerry. what? That that's of, not good enough. That kind, of, that kind of shit just happens all that's the time. That's pretty much, that's part of the course, that's Jerry. Not a, that's not your that's worst That's not it. Gig. That's Come not on, even no. close to your worst Come on now, I want to hear Fire and Brimstone here For now. a worst gig ever, it really has to set itself aside from that. Because you can have bad gigs where you go out and tell jokes yeah. and nobody laughs. Yeah, yeah. But they don't even come into the top 50. Not at all. Not at all. Because that's only just 50% of the things that could happen. They laugh or they don't laugh. We yeah. need to hear the horror, Jerry. It has to be, they didn't laugh. And then this other shit And then happened. this other shit happened. <laughs> yeah. And also they didn't laugh because of why. I mean, so you told us a couple of horrors now, in fairness, yeah. already. Like, some juicy horrors. Like. Well, this one, this one might actually... This, one, this one's pretty bad. You think it's going to top the last I ones? I think so, yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, I want to hear this. So, what it was, I was drafted in to do... <laughs> drafted, you know, drafted in. I just imagine, you know, <laughs> hello, hello <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> you, while your hair is getting shaved, like the start of a <laughs> full metal fucking jacket. <laughs> the MPs they, they are standing spun, beside you. <laughs> they, they fucking spun the, the comedian wheel and it landed on McBride and they said, send him off. <laughs> I got drafted in to do a gig in... Uh, now, I'm trying to think of what college it was. Because it's years ago, before I lived in Dublin... 
Uh, I'm gonna say Hogwarts. I'm gonna say Minute. Okay. All right, because it was towards Dublin, but not in Dublin. And I remember it wasn't all that far to Were you drive. living in Dublin? No. Okay. But I remember it wasn't all that far to drive to my wife's house, which is in Clancilla. All right. So that would be Minute, right? Yeah, yeah. That would t- tick all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. And it was a rag week gig, which we've come to learn oh, are, yeah. are not uh, conducive to comedy. It was rag week in Minute. Would you like a gig? It's in. It's during the day. It's yeah. At, it's at like oh, five yeah. o'clock. Great. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll get off work an hour early and I'll, I'll go up and do it. I, I actually... Next week's one is going to be the exact same thing yeah. that has happened quite oh, recently. Not. Tom. Oh no! It's no, no. not going to be the same. As okay, it. right, right, right. right. No. Okay, all right. So we went up, and what it was was there was a day out. It was like a big. Okay. It was like a big day festival, and there was a hell of a lot of shit going on. Okay, there was comedy, there was music, there was everything, and it right. was in what I assume was one of the student union bars or some such. Okay. Slightly off campus. It may not have even been minute. But <laughs> right, okay, you know, yeah. we're just going to say that this is what it was. There was students everywhere, yeah. thousands of them. There was a marquee set up. There was all this kind of crap. Okay, okay. And in the marquee was the Rubber Bandits. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you an idea as to when this happened. It was right about when Horse Outside Christ came out. So they had just started to to go it stratospheric. Explored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were the draw. For, but they still look, were only put on during the day. Okay? Right. But they filled the marquee outside. And myself and two other comedians were put inside in some form of student's union bar, which was a long hall with a raised stage at the end, which okay. later on that night was going to host the Sawed Off. This sounds okay now. This sounds okay. Yeah. Sounds, so they, they all do, Tom. They all start like this. All right. And they're running and screaming, right? Okay. So the Saw Doctors were going to be on later on that day. Um, I forget who else was on, but there was like a good bill throughout the day, right? Including former Eurovision Song Contest entrant Mickey Joe Hart. Oh, and well, Mickey Joe, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. He was going to be perform- performing later and the in the day. Doctors. Good God. Yeah. So earlier, for some reason, they decided that around about five o'clock, that'd be a good time to just throw three comedians to the fucking wolves. Yeah, them. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so five o'clock came and five o'clock went and there was nobody in the hall in the slightest whatsoever oh, who was were the rubber bandits still playing outside the rubber bandits were still playing outside <laughs> so if you had any heed wow in anything funny wow. whatsoever you'd be yeah. at the rubber bandits you were kind of half thinking I wouldn't mind being out at the rubber I bandits I wouldn't mind right? actually going catching the end of the show <laughs> yeah uh, there was talk of our gig being pulled okay which yeah. in hindsight was probably the best idea how long were you in comedy now at this stage? I, was in, I wasn't in it that, uh, that, that short a time. I was in it like three, four years now. Oh, so you... So, you yeah. So, you know, were I, you the hardest one out of the three of them once they... No, that, hell no. No, God no. I mean, the, the, I was by far the least of the comedians. You were the were greenest there. there, right? Okay. I was the greenest of us, of us there, yeah. Um, but we were starting to get an itch to fuck off home. Yeah. Now, here's the killing thing. We had been paid already. Oh, bollocks. Which was wonderful. So you just fucking... That is fantastic. It was just yeah. a lovely temptation of heading for the hills with yeah. the money in your pocket, right? We had been paid by cheque was the only thing. So I had this notion that oh, should we Could I find a shop pay? on the way home that would cash could it? Could you find a shop on the way home that would cash it? And again, this little greenness and naivety that, you know, you don't run out in a gig like that. Because you've been paid to do a job, you fucking do it. And right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was like my main... My main thought was, there. That was... You got paid to do a job. That was my bride's ethos that you evening. You know, it's... it's, it's it, you got to do it. But at the same time, we'd been here for like an hour and a half, two hours, and nothing was happening, and there was no crowd. And I was saying to myself, you know, night's getting on. Right. I said, I want to go on. Yeah. To nobody. You can, you can stick around all evening. I don't care. But I want to go on. I want to say that I did this gig, and I'm going to fuck off. And if I'm doing it to no one but the barman, so be it. Okay. And we were told, wait 20 minutes, the road bandits are wrapping up. Right. And we'll fuck off. So we said, okay. Right. In that time, uh, Mickey Joe Hart came into the room with his guitar and his band. He had a fucking band as well. He had a band as well. It's Mickey Joe Hart plus three. Wow. So you should have been wrapped and fucked off at this. We should have. Well, no, he still wasn't scheduled to come on for like another hour and a half, two hours, right? Right. Okay. But he was coming on to do a sound check. Yeah, yeah. Simple enough. You work away there, Mickey Joe, and he went on up and he strummed his guitar and he. Picked away at it and the lad. What was his song? What was his song again? His song was We've Got the, the World, world tonight. tonight. All right. How, right. Did he, how that 
fuck was going to fill an hour and 25 minutes other than that song? Sam. I do yeah. not know. But Okay. So, he was strumming away, picking away one thing and another, and we could just hear a horse outside, wrapping up outside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this was the exodus we had been waiting for. Yeah. And true enough, the doors opened and 600 thirsty students... Christ almighty. ...fled from the marquee where there was no bar... To a bar. To a bar. Not to what was standing on the stage. Then. No. Right, yeah, yeah. They walked in from the left, the bar was on the right, the stage was at the back, and not one of them looked sideways. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, right. folks, how are you? Now, some of the more drunker kids noticed, hey, that's Mickey Joe Hart on stage. <laughs> Where were you standing exactly? I was standing at the back. Going, <laughs> Is someone going to fucking bring me on here? <laughs> okay. So Mickey has to go, no, no, lads. It's, uh, I'm just checking my sound. Yeah. There's actually a couple of comedians to come on. Yeah, well, no, because Mickey was like, oh, how are you all doing there? <laughs> oh, you it's prick. So fucking kind of thing, right? You prick with your big Johnny Gall hitting you. And he fucking knew because the guy who, who had, uh, was, was was looking after us had said, okay, Mickey, you can wrap up and the comedians are going to go on now. So it's not like he didn't fucking know we were there. That was the thing. Oh, the dirty bastard. But all of a sudden there's a little, um, a little crescent of girls at the front of the stage going, oh, Mickey, play us. We've got the world tonight. Oh, you fucker, Please Mickey. And, and Mickey's like looking down at them with this little smile on his face, strumming his guitar, kind of going, oh, well, I don't know if I should play it because they're supposed oh, to be... Oh, you dirty bastard. There's supposed to be someone else coming on now in a minute, but I'll be oh. back later on. But you know... Maybe could I play... Would I play something short for you while you are here? Oh, the fucking bollocks. You see, the thing about Mickey is... Mickey knew right at that moment... These comedians might be around, tipping around... But I've got a very finite existence at this fucking crack in this one song. Look, kind of can't blame him. Whatever he, whatever he was thinking, he was not leaving the stage. Yeah. And I'm born in daylight here. I want to get up the fucking road. Yeah. So, I walked up onto the stage... Crossed it past his band, took the microphone out of his hand, and said, "Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey Hart will be back later on in the night. Give him a big round of applause. Goodbye." <laughs> <laughs> and he's just standing there, fucking open mouthed. He's standing and he's, he's fucking guitar. Stares oh me out my of god! It, right? Fantastic. He fucking stares me out of it, right? And he he goes to take the mic back out of my hand. Wow! Right? Oh, and I don't let go. And all of a sudden, I'm standing here in minute, <laughs> or whatever concert it was, locking eyes with Mickey Joe fucking Hart in front of six hundred. You would have totally smashed him though, had it gone into a fight, like. Well, yeah, but we just really didn't want it to go that Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's a pride thing at that stage. Yeah. So in the end, I just kind of went like, "Give me the fucking thing." Right. And Mickey just hung his guitar up. And fucked off, and the band were there, kind of going like, "Are we playing here?" I'm like, "Mickey, are we kicking off, or what's going on? <laughs> you know, are, we, are we playing, or are we leaving?" And Mickey goes, "Come on, lads!" And I turn around to the crowd, and I was like, "Ladies and gentlemen, give Mickey Joe a big hand. He'll be back later on." And I got booed. You actually the got booed. Far fucking wall. Oh for my not letting god, Mickey Joe. And the killing thing was, it was just like the twenty, thirty girls at the front who started booing. Yeah. And everybody else was like, what's everybody booing at? Let's all boo. Let's all boo. Yeah. And they all started to boo, and I'm standing there going, I'm, I'm here going <laughs> so guys, guys. 600 of them booing. <laughs> <coughs> Roaring and shouting at me, right? And I'm here, it's like, so guys. <laughs> so guys. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to hear, who wants to hear a bit of comedy? <laughs> you, you turned into fucking like Jerry Seinfeld. Fuck off. <laughs> oh my God. And I'm like, so what is who, the deal? Who, who <laughs> is from the country, eh? <laughs> Like, give, me, give me a big cheer if you're from the city and they're like fuck you oh my god <coughs> and it became like why, why are we giving out to this man oh he was going to fight Mickey Joe and I'm like oh this fuck is me. fucking amazing oh, well, we, the other two comedians are down the back the other two breaking their shit they're laughing. breaking their shit and they're doing all this kind of thing and uh, I'll never forget one girl kind of made her way through the crowd okay <coughs> Excuse me, I'm coughing and spluttering here. She made her way through the crowd like as if she wanted to say, I'd like to hear a joke. Really? And she stood in front of me and she put her hand up. And I goes, okay. I goes, I goes yeah, what would you like? She goes, I've lost my friend. Would you just make a wee call out? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm checking the watch and I've got like... 
Is I've it... got like a minute 40 seconds gone, you know. Oh my sweetie, can you, uh, I've lost my parents in the supermarket. Yeah. And uh, I, I just, uh, I went on for about 15 minutes. Just How the fuck did you go on for feel, 15 just minutes? Just fielding abuse. Wow. Did you throw any back? Did you try and actually no, plug them with comedy didn't. like? No. I then uh, looked down and it was like 14.50, 14.51, oh 52, 15 minutes. That's it. Minute punch. Thank you. You're out. I'm gone. Left the stage the back way because I didn't know if this was going to be a fucking oh rare. Oh my night. sweet Jesus Christ. And I didn't, even, I didn't even go around the back to the other comedians. I just walked out the back, check in hand and got in the car and got the fuck out of Dodge. Well fucking done. Did they check cash? Hell yeah. Did it? Yeah, fucking Fantastic. if I hadn't. What became of the fucking lads or the saw doctors more than I? Imagine having to follow number one, you basically shit all over the place. Right. You took their Mickey Joe Hart off. And then Mickey finally turns up, they're blazing fucking drunk. Imagine being the fucking saw doctors. Then I suppose, yeah, bailing, bailing, hey, hey. I suppose, it's, yeah, it's, you're all right at that stage, I suppose. It's, it's, it's not something I ever want to think about, Tom. Oh, you poor bastard. And that is why it's this week's worst, worst gig, gig ever. ever. Jesus. That is fucking rough. <coughs> rough. It's going right. to be tough to top that one, Tom, but I think we'll try it I've, next week. Uh, no, I've probably... I don't think it's as a... The one I, I, the one I have in mind, the fucking 20 I have in mind, they're not so much abusive ones. I haven't gotten them, but they're definitely ones that make you just want to put sandpaper on inside your mouth. You know, it's just like, oh, sweet Jesus. Cause, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, nerve-wracking enough as it can be in the worst of times. But you know when you look at a scenario and it's bad, you're like, eh, maybe it won't so, be so bad. But you get up there, it's way worse. And it's way worse. Yeah. Worse than you ever imagined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedy, but, folks. Anybody can give it a go. Oh, you can give it a go. If, you feel, if any of this It's like plastering, like Jeremy. It's like plastering. Anybody can give plastering a go. Yeah. But bad plasters fucking show up in two seconds. I swear to God, man. Yeah. So, I th- yeah, plow on with our... <laughs> We're not really ambassadors for comedy. <laughs> no. <so. laughs> no. But we're going to rip on here now with the... Uh, the final bit of, but the we, as you can probably tell by both our accents, we're definitely uh, we're uh, of agricultural background more than anything else. Very cultured background. I didn't see a town till I was twenty. Tarmac was a fucking new concept to me. <laughs> Took me to my fucking second year of college to realize what it actually was. I thought it was just a term for fashion term for a pair of shoes. But anyway. <laughs> This last piece we like to call uh, every now and then we got yeah, we, yeah. We, we we got out of the sticks and we, yeah, we, we spread our wings. We did, we did, <clears throat> and uh, and we recount that now in a segment we call Cold Tuesday Day Out. Cold Tuesday Day Out. Now this is a this is a we've been kind of plowing on with like as childhood one of us, but I just wanted to change tack for this particular episode because I have one where it's still very much Cold Tuesday Day Out. green, green as fuck. Like green is the thing. Uh, when you're a child, you don't really know that you're green or you're not, but at least when you get to your latter teens and you start going. Th- Colleges and discos, and you realize, Jesus Christ, I am fucking green. Like. I don't think you can be green as a child. You're just a child. Right? Yeah, you're just a child. Because I mean, a culture child, and city child, they're all the well. No, some well, no. some kids can like three year olds can look at you and they give you that forty year old look. Fucking you know that boy, look. You, yeah. yeah, but there's this particular one was uh, I I put down my first year in college. Okay, so college. We're, we're I was still fresh. I was a fresh eighteen year old. Yes, but I was I don't. Even, had I even turned? Yeah, I had. I turned eighteen. Not, not, not the fucking craggy faced man that sits. Before. No, not the horror show you're looking at right now. No, um, the uh, yeah, turned eighteen, and of course, first year in college, we'd all gotten excited. I'd never been on a plane. Wow. Yeah, I had not been. I on had a- to beat there. I was on a plane when I was ten. To Were you? Island man. Yes, sir. Fuck me. No, no propeller thing. That with an old fucking. A, a Twaits fucking dumper engine inside in the fucking yeah, yoke, yeah. Propeller <laughs> engine to the fucking. And I remember being real disappointed because I was expecting to go on like a double decker jumbo jet to the do, Isle of Man. Do you know why? Do you know? Do you know what? Uh, what's his name had a great. There was a famous question to your man, Mr. Boeing. And he, he had this thing where he would only ever fly in uh, uh, four jet jet planes. That had right. quad quad jets. Yeah. It's the only time we think we would ever fly in. When they asked him why you would only, sorry, Mister Boeing, why is it that you would only ever fly in quad turbine jets? He says because we haven't fucking invented one with five. That's just his, that was as simple as he was never going on one of the. We can lose three of these. Those chicken yeah. fucking yeah, those chicken carrying fucking little fucking Indian dumper engines. Engine. Yeah. yeah, fuck that. So you were eighteen when I was eighteen when I got on a plane. I'd been to other countries via. Boat and whatnot, uh, when we were younger, but I'd never been on all the boys have been on a plane and all the rest, but that was only sideline to it. We were all heading to Boston for the summer off for our J1. Holy fuck! Oh, fucking hell, we were amazing. We got on a plane, got half cut, 
the whole fucking shooting gallery like a bunch of fucking lulas. Like, you know, can you imagine it? Like, all oh, college God, mates. Like, well, imagine it. Just all. No one were gone for the summer. Like, and mothers we, crying like there was nobody's business in Shannon Airport. Oh, it was fucking. It was like going off on the Titanic. What were, like, you, what were you planning to do in Boston? What were you, what we, there was heaps of work. We were all studying to be civil engineers. We were going to get jobs in the buildings. The big dig was on. Right. The big dig was on. And essentially what it is is a new version of the subway system that was going underneath the, the watch call it river, the big river that was there and all the rest. And we'd, But there was a heap of work going on, going over there. We had kind of lined up a couple of small numbers and all the rest, but we'd no place to live. But we said, fuck it. That's the least of our worries. There's a couple of boys, mates of ours that are over there already. We will find a place to fucking live. This will be all right. This, this is sounding like a lot that happens today with Australia where lads are just like, fuck it. Yeah, I have enough for a hotel for the first two nights, and then yeah. try, ah, it'll, it'll sort itself. It'll out. be great. We well, see. This is the great thing about the J One. They're very, what they do is they put you up. They give you. They sell you an amazing idea of this thing. They'll give you a ninety day visa. They'll put you up for the first night and give you an initiation into the way of America, rather than just throwing you off the plane as in start it yourself. So they pick you up in a bus. Some game rob you. Like, yeah, you exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, fucking coming to America. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is a great country indeed. You know. So we we get in. Get in the fucking bus, head into fucking Boston, the rough side of fucking Boston, of course. <laughs> that night we got to fucking, we were up in the hostel, I looked out the window, I saw a carjacking. It a was straight up, a straight up carjacking. Drag you out of the car. This is fucking ringing mammy, one. fuck this place, fuck this place. I am. This I'm is out. where Benji got shot. Down yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking old yellow. This is fucking. <laughs> oh lads I'm making my fucking excuses and already with the lads going yeah, I'm not even unpacking the Hurleys lads I'm okay. getting straight back on that plane alright so we stuck with it we got explained to mind crossing the road boys because they crossed from the other side Jesus one Christ. thing that fucking blew my mind is a lot of American cars didn't actually have to have yellow or white indicators they had red indicators or white, white lit bulbs in the front and red lit bulbs in the back so they just looked like a, a, a brake light flashing <laughs> anyway, that was the thing that nearly killed me a bunch of times but anyway plowing on <laughs> a bunch of times a bunch of fucking times but we got you see we, we were kind of older looking children like you know I was fucking I was old when I was 12 like, but we got mm. we got beer when we even though it was over 21s and all right. the rest we got jobs the whole fucking thing worked out well I worked for a fella uh, driving a pickup truck dropping off water around the sites because I, I had a driver's full driver's license and I could drive a truck that sounds handy grand job left us go after two fucking weeks anyway but that was grand we were living on the floor of a, of a mate's basement or basement apartment right beside Fenway Station and when I mean right beside the tracks <laughs> I mean I could have reached in and taken somebody's lunch off their fucking table out of the window at the living room Jesus window Jesus Christ like it was that fucking close. Timber houses too in America. It shook like a fucker. You lost the fucking fill in the first night. But we no sooner lost our jobs. Your man in fairness, he paid us an extra week's wages to say sorry. And he's the same guy that even actually given me a lend off his fucking station wagon to do my American driver's test <laughs> down at the DMV. It was one of those timber sided panel. You know, the, fucking I swear to God, it was. I always a, thought they were just made them for films. No, it was about seven hundred and fifty foot long, right? It had a fucking anchor and everything. This thing was a fucking barge. But I took this yoke down to the DMV. The guy, he was a lovely fella. He was gay as Christmas, but he's his name was Patrick, so he's part Irish, but he pronounced it Patrick, which oh, is fair enough. But he says, you have an Irish license. I do. He says, yeah, we don't do reverse around corners. We don't do hill starts. He says, look, drive out that side of the car park there. Come in the other side. There's your American license. One, that, two, three. That was it. With that, we all got jobs in security. Three of us. Myself, Connors and Kylie. Oh, man, he Connors and Kylie. Three fucking... It sounds like a security I know. Firm. I know. So we joined, we joined up with this crowd anyway. The oldest security firm in the, in the entirety of America. They made the first money securing the train light. The stage... The, this is Wells Fargo. We, they covered Wells Fargo. They covered Wells Fargo as their security firm. That's who they were. And uh, I just know Wells Fargo from watching Pawn Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Wells Fargo would have been the. They were the watch. We call it. They were the contractors to building it. The insurance or the security firm that were over them was the company I worked for. And we got cool suits. We got black suits, and we got just a little badge. The whole lot. One of the lads got one of not one of the two. But one of the lads got stationed over in uh, Tiffany's in right. watching diamonds. I got. And myself and Kylie got this sweet number. We got this place. It was uh, an offices of banking. So we were there getting initiated with all the rest of it. And that Did was you get a gun? I know. No, no. One or two of the lads had to go. Oh, I no doubt asked for a gun. But I didn't have, it, obviously, a license. So they didn't let me carry or whatever. But we did. We got to talk into our into our sleeves. We got no to, shit. Yeah, we got to talk into our sleeves. I swear to God, right? 
Now this sounds amazing. I, this no, is... this is where it's fucking... This was pretty amazing, but... On our time off, we had to find a fucking place to live. At this, we were three weeks into sleeping on a floor. On a 90-day visa. On a 90-day visa. And I mean, we were making decent money. So we figured, we, but we just, we went, we went and visited every fucking rental in the city of Boston. And every one of them was a tumbling down heap of shit. Do you remember the film uh, A Beautiful Mind? Yes. With Russell Crowe, where he went mad. Yes. He was a Boston professor. Okay. We visited his fucking house to rent it. This will tell, now at the time I weighed a bit more than I did now. It's about fourteen and a half stone. I stood on the front step walking in. The whole house tilted towards me. Are you fucking kidding me? I swear on my fucking life. Your man that was to, was bringing us around was this crazy fucking doc fucking doc. What you call it? A doc Brown looking doc character. Brown, and he yeah. just went ah, it's a fixer rapper. It's like no, this is a burner downer. This is a faller downer. Yeah. This is a fucking match and a can of petrol into this yoke. <laughs> fucking run. Saw every fucking place there was where our hearts were fucking broken. We were really breaking us now, sleeping on the floor and lads stepping over you. You never get into fucking sleep because I felt like getting up for looking a piss for in the house, night and just old. looking, looking, but having a fucking job too. One of the lads' girlfriends, anyway, she was over there. She was living with a gang of girls. She was on the search for us as well. She was finally beaten, the, beaten this day. She was sitting on the bus on the way back, looking all tired. And this old lady sits beside her. This is the story we, as we get it, right? Lads, I have great news, she says. I was sitting beside this old lady today looking a bit knackered looking for houses for you. The old lady turns to her and says Dar- Darling she was a well dressed kind of hippie-ish looking one but she was yeah. in her 60s. She says Are you alright? She says I'm not. Told her the story. I'm looking for a house for the three boys. Don't worry about it she says. Bring them you. bring them three lads over to visit me. Bring them over to fucking visit me this evening. Gave her the address. I put them up. I put up travellers the whole time when they're coming through. Pay me a bit of rent as grand I'll make a few dinners for them. Can you imagine our fucking excitement? High when, fives all around. When three fucking rednecks heard that we were going to have our lunches fucking made for us, our dinners fucking waiting on the table for us, and all our washing done, and this one wanting to negotiate a fucking price with us. We went, so we said we'd start to, I smelt a slight rat. I says, look, maybe it's too good to be true, but I wanted to fucking believe. You know that kind of way? <laughs> we turned up in what would be something like, it would be a fucking road like you'd see in... Do you know those fucking... They're always the gorgeous family homes in America. You know those fucking beautiful yeah, roads? Yes. like well, tra- Everybody's everybody's watering their garden, waving over the fucking yoke at you. Right. Everybody drives a top-end Volvo. Like, this is just ridiculous. We got off the fucking bus to this place, and we went up to the one. Knocked on the door, anyway. She turns... She opens the door. She's wearing, like, one of, one of those big, long moo things. You know, like the... Hello, lads! She says, come on in. Come on in, guys. She was part Irish, she reckoned, this one. Sure, half a fucking Boston yeah, part Irish. Yeah, look at fucking I'm part Irish if you look back far enough. So we, we, I, we're start, I, and the second she opened the door, I thought, Jack Daniels. Middle of the day, why can I smell Jack Daniels? <laughs> sure, look at Optimism was kind of clouding me. I said, come on, boys, we're in. Walked in. The two boys, but not one of them under 6'5". I was the short arse of the gang. Yes. In the door we go, the two boys had to duck anyway. In the door we go. Walking around, fucking gorgeous house, unbelievable. She starts showing us around the place. Will you for a downside here? Would you like a drink? She says. I says, sup of tea would be lovely. She says, Ali, you'll have something stronger than that Irish lads. So three whiskeys came over to us in the middle of the fucking day. Beautiful fucking house, stunning place. And we're walking off down the corridor. She says, well, this, I says, what's the story, missus? She didn't want to get into the ins and outs, but she says, it's like this. I have two sons. She says, we have another spare bedroom. She says. And you'll take the two boys' bedrooms, but the two boys are off to Hawaii, summer swimming or surfing for the summer, and to them you'll be kind of paying. So we'll work out a bit of a deal, maybe to be a hundred dollars a week or something, and you'll pay, and I'll make your sandwiches the whole lot. I'll be only delighted to have three Irish boys here. All right, okay. Still, now this is all coming up, fucking Tom, fucking Connors, and fucking Kylie at the minute. Like this is <laughs> yeah. fucking roses. Like, we're starting to get this into the groove of this. Going, you are fucking joking. Time, yeah. You are joking. Now I met the two young fellas. They're about sixteen or seventeen, a little younger than us, and they looked. They had this cagey look in their fucking eye. Now the lads had a. They didn't look like they. They looked nearly too young to be her sons, but as it turned out, they were anyway. But she. She kind of quickly brushed over talking to the boys and the boys kind of were packing bags and stuff and they kind of gave us a look and then walked away from us. And I says, all right, there's something off here a small bit. Walked on through the house and he says, well, what do you think, lads? I says, missus is beautiful. When can we move in? Yeah. Bring on your stuff this evening, she says. Where do I sign? I'll get you bunked up to be 100%. We'll have a mighty summer together. So we're all fucking high five, and anyway, I'd forgotten about the weird look the boys had given me. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have given a weird. I shouldn't have forgotten that look. 
We head away anyway. This beautiful, fu- right by the fucking bus. We could, we were going buying a car between the three of us. It was going to be fucking mighty. We'd plans made the whole fucking shooting gallery. Fucking unbelievable. On the bus, delighted with ourselves. This is going to be amazing. Bagged up the bags, told the lads to go fuck themselves. We're Stick out of here. Floor. Fuck you guys. We're out of here. Fucking floor. You're walking over me in the morning. Yeah, god damn it. In we. <laughs> we land on to this beautiful part <laughs> of New England. <laughs> A bricked fucking beautiful, beautiful paved fucking road. <laughs> Midgets were in the air. There was birds singing. Crickets. Everything seemed fucking too good to be true. It fucking was too. Was but it? it wasn't then it hit us. We got a little closer. We got into the house. She says, boys, come on in. It is fucking, you're lucky fucking time day. In you get, she says. Man, I'll show you to your rooms. Now it is even looking better. We're like, jeez, this is all right. This could fucking work out. Lads, lads, lads. So the boys, all three of us had our own fucking room, chucked the fucking, the bags up on the beds, ready to go. I says, right, I says, let us, I says to your one, I says, let's make you, I want to make you a bit of dinner. She says, not at all, she says, I must show you the surprise I have for you. Oh, man. Down the end of the corridor was another stairs that led, led down to a basement. Oh, Tom, this is fucking. No, no. Hold on, hold on. We walked down to the world's greatest man cave you have ever seen in your fucking life, right? <laughs> right. Dear, now we're still going Jesus Christ cursing and swearing because we're just shocked never Miller Lite fridge didn't even know what a man cave was at the time no had no idea had no idea I, I had exist. never seen a carpeted fucking stairs this was a carpeted <laughs> stairs down to man. a man didn't wear his shoes going down here there was a television on. we were so overawed with the excitement of we didn't think of the, lo- the logic of this thing a woman in her late 50s is not going to build one of these fucking things for herself no but we forgot all about that off of the shorts down to vests we were wearing shorts kicked off the shoes biggest fucking telly I ever saw an L shaped lazy boy fucking sofa pulled out this was going we lads we, were, we weren't moving back to Ireland this we were going living with this woman forevermore. Just ring your mum and say you're not Yeah, that's home. it. Sorry, missus. Sorry. Fully stocked fridge with beer. And I mean a, fr- a beer fridge. There was a separate fridge for grub. This was a Miller Lite special. There was, one, there was fridges built into the side of the sofa. You're imagining the greatest time of your fucking life. She says, do you want to play a video game, lads, or whatever? The whole PlayStation is hooked up to that thing. She says, the thing. She says, this fucking thing was like a barn door for a fucking, for a TV. We'd all forgotten the weirdness of this scenario at this stage. We had totally sunk and drank our Kool Aid. We were definitely, definitely 100% involved here. Never leaving. This is going to be awesome. We're about 30 seconds. She had walked out the door. We're about 30 seconds into our bottles of fucking beer and about to play multiplayer of some sort of fucking shoot the shit out of each other kind of a thing for the evening. Right. When a man <clears throat> equaling the boy's height. But about four times, all three of our fucking wit walked through the door. He was like the great Kelly out of fucking wrestling. Right, what was his business? It was his fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> He'd been married to this one. Yeah. He was, he was of Hispanic descent, this guy. He had a moustache to ticker in your fucking arm. Right. In a vest he was. He walked in okay. he says, You all right, boys? I look so nice. Just totally nonchalant. I'm granting yourself. Yeah, how are you keeping? Thinking this fellow was only in to fix the, fuck, fix the fucking fridge or something. He says, boys, I hate to fucking tell you, but she's after selling you a fucking red herring here. This is my fucking place. You can't stay here. Those two young, two young fellas are my fucking young fellas. He says, and straight away it hit me. I should have looked at the fucking look that the lad, your man, gave me. Yeah. It was their old fella. He just happened to be separated from the mad bitch. She was on a heap of medication and was a fucking fully blown fucking alcoholic. Every second week she was bringing fellas in off the street to f- come live with him. <laughs> this was a running fucking thing. This fella had to run fellas night and fucking day. And the fucking young lads wouldn't even give they wouldn't. The they up. just looked down. They just went, not another fucking mad bastard thing Mammy's doing. Get the fuck, lads. You may as well turn around and never come back here. Now, in fairness, this fella walked in with a nail bar in his fucking hand too. <laughs> I nearly shit the fucking bed when I saw the, the size of this bastard coming in. And he just took the bottle of beer out of my hand. I, and it was up at my mouth, like, and I tell him, this fella, no, you're grand. And he just gave me a look. Lads. And could you not plead your case and say, well, look at I told, I told him, he said, lads, I've heard this. He says, look, you seem like nice lads. And in fairness to him, he said, if there was fucking room here, I'd consider renting to you. But he says, there isn't, look around. He said, I said, your young fella's not going to 
It's Hawaii surfing. What are you? What? <laughs> them two lads have never been up in a surfboard in their fucking life. But they weren't even leaving no, the house. The two boys are going camping for the weekend. Oh, this one had lost her fucking marbles and has sold us a pure fucking red herring. So bag and baggage, back on with the fucking shoes, back on with the fucking shirts. You, oh, you fucking... <laughs> three <laughs> fucking... Connor and Kelly and O'Mahony are just yeah. like homeless as fuck right now. Yeah, homeless as fuck. We told everybody to shove it up in their hole. Because, of course, we thought we were fucking home and dry. Out onto the fucking curb. Your man... I says to your man... I asked him, I says, fuck it. Any chance of an old spin to the nearest station? Yeah, he he helped me out with my fucking bag. That's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out. The show never fucking darkened his doorway again. Oh, Three Jesus. fucking cold cheese. We sat there in the fucking midges, right? Your man let us take the fucking beer for a finish. So we sat there with midges biting the fucking heads of us on the corner of this fucking street. All you could do was laugh. Oh, and all you, you could fucking do was laugh. I, we'd looked at 28 houses in that fucking three weeks, like, and this was the one that we thought was a fucking winner. As it turns out, the house we did end up getting was actually a fantastic house, but we, re- we quickly found out after our neighbours why we got it at such a decent rate. It had just been done up. It is four storeys high. Yeah. There was a balcony at the back joining all four storeys. Sounds nice. Beautiful. The reason why he was able to rent it is because it was called the House of Death. Because? Twelve people had been killed there because of a balcony that was 40 years old on the back of the house. Similar to the brand new one that was there. Had collapsed like a fucking scissors and cut heads arms and fucking backs off people only four years previous not only that Tom it didn't have the biggest man cave you'd ever seen no it did fucking not <laughs> it did fucking it didn't have carpet on the fucking stairs either I'll tell you that much oh my oh. fucking god three fucking culties. I, I'm, and I'm convinced had we been city folk or of urban fucking descent we would have smelt a fucking rat instead we got so giddy and excited at all the shiny shit you just heard a bit of free dinner on your yeah that's exactly it free you dinner. lost the run of your thought. yeah you're like you want to send sandwiches with me Wrapped up in batch paper to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do I fucking sign? Where do I sign? Lady that someone met on a bus. <laughs> I can't even tell you her name. I, can't, I don't know if we ever found out her fucking name. No, oh, man. Never leave the country, man. I know. I never know. leave the country. Fuck Sweet Jesus. Man. And that's this week's Call She's Day Out. Holy shit. Well, I do well to top that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's a bizarre one, but I just said I'd taken it a different tack because it's a story that has to be told. I don't think I'll ever get a chance to tell it on stage, but I felt I had to tell oh, you. Oh, it has to like, come out, man. Yeah, it's a... The I'm bizarre... Never. Like, you couldn't... I'm never going to Boston. No, forget about it. And certainly I'm don't talk to any already. old ladies on buses anyway, that's for sure. Like. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't know. Well, anyway, we've come to the end of this week's Tom, Tom and Jerry, Jerry show. show. Uh, as usual you can get me on Twitter at Jerry McBride and at Tom underscore yeah fucking underscore I know oh my honey really I know underscores everything I or know. you can follow the show itself on at Tom and Jerry show you're and never I'm gonna s- let it down are you swear to god, god I'm fucking pat on the back for I Jerry forget that honest one. to god I'm just like I'm I, just waiting for the call from fucking Disney well I have forgot oh, well, Warner I've, Brothers anyway I've, I've actually forgotten the login details for it but I'll find them we'll get them don't worry about it uh other than that, we'll be back next week again with another show for you all. Yeah. Until then, Until then we'll see you later. Thanks Good for luck.